What's going on guys? Welcome back to the rebuild of the Raptor 660. I hope you enjoyed the intro. That was actually my old grill we took out to the farm. We packed a seven gallon bucket full of Tannerite and sent that thing to the moon. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, but anyway, I've almost got this baby done. There's a couple things I need to get buttoned up on it. And hopefully today I can get a test fire in. And then that will kind of determine my next moves, whether it runs or not. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm gonna get you guys into the uh, how we got to this point, and we'll go from there. Let's go.
Tighten the bolts down here, 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 and here to 5.1 foot pounds. Lock tight on them. Before I try and put this bracket on, I'm going to get some gasket maker so I can get that sealed up. So for now I'm going to get the starter gear cleaned up, get it lubed up, put back on there and then we should be able to put the stator cover on and get it hooked up. This is ready. New stator, fix the clamp bolts, gasket makers in there. Need to get that put on there. This is all nice and clean, lubed up. Got the seals up here by the gaskets, got the dowel pins, whatever, in each of them. This one doesn't have one. Put the gasket on, torque down, should be ready to go. After only a few hours, as usual, got the collars out, got the new collars in, looks good, a lot better than before, there's no low spots in it, it was a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be, but, and it could be easier if there's another tool out there that I don't know about, but that's how I did it, and I believe this baby's ready to get put back on the bike. So we're going to jump right into that. It's getting late. Sunday night or Monday night, Memorial Day. Getting this stuff done. 
Let's keep it rolling. Okay, we got the shock backed off, no pressure. Got the sleeves opened up as much as we can. We're going to try and get this motor on. I've got some grease. I'm going to get it greased up in here. Get all the I got all the bolts cleaned up, get them greased up, and we're going to try and get this thing on. All right, I got some the boards holding the bike up, and then I got another board on a jack here for some extra support. I'm gonna get this thing brought over. First, I'm gonna wipe these down. Put a little bit more grease in there. Bracket back for you. It's like right there, but it's not. You're going to have to push it with some ass. It's not lined up. The holes are over here, and we, the bracket's back here. This so cleaned up. Alright, so the steering stem is in, but I don't know if you saw it in my last for my previous video, but this bar that it mounts to is actually bent. You can see the bend. It kind of sticks this way. It's been beat up before, but <clears throat> we're gonna try and run with it. it kind of makes it a little bit tight on the steering, but we'll see if it'll play out or not. Not really much I can do for it without weakening the the bars here, so it's what it is. Keep on going. Alright, there it is. We have the Lone Star steering stem. It's 
installed with the Lone Star Anti-Vibe Handlebar Clamp. Like I said, it's bent, it's really tight. It's probably going to need some more work, but... That's what it is for now. Alright, so up to this point, my wife helped me get the motor put back on. Um, with the new 686cc piston jug, the big bore kit. Over here I got the new Tusk Heavy Duty clutch plates installed, the water pump rebuilt. The clutch is actually hooked up for now. Uh, I did start getting the radiator hoses back on. Get, got those going. The rear brakes are, are bled out. Everything is good back here. The only other thing for the brakes, I'm going to take this off and just block it off. I don't like the parking brake. I tried it, I just can't get it to work. So I've, I got the, uh, the brake block from TM Design Works and we can go ahead and get that on hopefully today. I have the DID gold chain. We're gonna get that on, it's nice and sexy. Got a bunch of parts from TM Design Works, the chain, uh, chain guide. Here's the brake block that's gonna go on. And the aluminum dipstick, new chain roller guides, and a uh, new magnetic oil drain plug. So hopefully we can get all those on today. Um, as far as up front goes, the radiator has been installed with the new Tusk temperature gauge cap. I like that. I got the thermostat hooked up, the wiring is all good, the hose is on. I did go ahead and get the Lone Star Plus One steering stem installed with new Pro Taper SE handlebars. So I did a plus one on the steering stem and then a little bit less of a rise on the Pro Taper bars. So it should equal out to about where it was at as far as height goes, but it's going to keep it up off the gas tank now on that piece of plastic right there. So that should work out good. I did get this new Black Box Performance CDI. It's remapped with the. Um, has a little bit more performance to it, so we switched, I just swapped that out like yesterday or the day before. Got most of the main wiring harness hooked up, everything's getting tied in place where it needs to go. The reverse switch is all good, it's all hooked up on the other side down low. I'll show you that when we get there. I still want to replace the levers, they're pretty beat up, bent, as you can see, wobbly. I mean, well it's not tight, but it is wobbly in there. Same with this side. This side's tight and it's still that wobbly, so I may have to redo some of the wiring, but for now most of it's hooked up where it needs to go. I just went back to the manual and it actually has a pretty good picture of how this stuff goes in here. So that's all good. And then I did get most of the wires, like I said, hooked up in place. Got the new stator in on this side. You can see the new wires coming out there. This side's all hooked up. I actually had to take it back off yesterday. I forgot to put the damn timing chain in. So this is a new timing chain. It's all good now. I got the head back yesterday or the day before, which is rebuilt. It has all the new kibble white valves, springs, guides, seals, everything's in there. I had a, uh, a trusted family friend rebuild this for me. And he charged me next to nothing, so I can't complain. Everything looks beautiful. It may still need to get machined down just a little bit. I think it said for the center intake guide, it may need machined down like two millimeters or something like that. So I'm gonna install everything, give it some manual turns and see if anything's hitting or knocking or touching. If it is, we'll have to just take it off and take it back. And he said he can mill it down and get it right. So hopefully I get the head on today or tomorrow. I think tomorrow will probably be better. I like to do it all one time when I have enough sleep. <laughs> the starter's on, all new gaskets on both sides. This still needs to get torqued down, but this is a new Renthal 13 tooth front sprocket. Like I said, the reverse is hooked up. It's a little bit of slacking in. I think it'll work out, but if not, we'll adjust. I got the new IMS shifter lever. I had it on, but I had to take this side back off again. So we'll get that put back on, get it in place. So I did forget the exhaust. I put the exhaust on for now, but it'll probably have to get taken back off once I get the headers going and all that, get the head on. It's the HMF performance off of Amazon. It's like 350 bucks. 
but the colors are beautiful. Everything looks nice in there. Should look really good with the blacked out headers once I get it all done. So I'm gonna get back to work on this thing. Hopefully I have the final video for you guys here in the next two or three weeks. And let me know what you guys think.
All right, I got the head installed. Got the new stage two hot cam on. Got the new cam chain, kibble white stud kit is installed all the way around. I believe it is top dead center. I have my two notches out here and here. And the eye is lined up. So, that's where we're at. Had to take this whole side off again. I actually put the cam chain guide in upside down. So, and you can't really change it out if you have these little pegs on the bottom side. So, <laughs> It's like the third time I've had to take this side off, but for right now I'm just going to lube up the rocker arms and put this on temporarily. I'll have to take it back off to get the gasket maker put on, but for now I'm just trying to see if everything's going to work properly as it should. Alright, here we go. First start since the rebuild. Let's see what happens. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this one. She's back to life. She ran, she idled. I can't complain yet. We're going to keep it at that. It was a really good feeling for it to, uh, to start up again. I'm not sure why the CDI is not working, but this is the black box CDI that I got off eBay. Um, but when I hooked this one up, the reverse light would come on like whenever I turn the key on the reverse light and the neutral light would both come on then the reverse light would go off after a second but it wouldn't it would not let the bike start so I switched out the CDI's back to the stock and as soon as I did that almost instantly this thing fired up 
Um, if you guys know what I need to do or if there's something else I need to do, a wire somewhere or something like that, just let me know. Um, but other than that, I've got a whole lot of adjusting and dialing in to get done, get this thing ready to get back on the trails. And hopefully I can find some YFZ450 shocks. If anybody's got any, hit me up. <laughs> Hope to see you guys in the next one.